Number 10. Lisbon's Imposing Cathedral. In the city's Castello district near the ancient Alfama area, Lisbon's fortified Romanesque cathedral has undergone a number of style makeovers considering that the original structure was consecrated in 1150. A collection of earthquakes finishing in the damaging 1755 trembling entirely damaged that which stood in the 12th century. What you see today is a blend of building styles, the standout features being the twin castellated bell towers that decorate the downtown skyline especially evocative in the late midday when a set-up sunlight burnishes the brickwork with a golden veneer. Inside, a resplendent rose home window assists brighten an instead dismal interior, and also you're likely to head directly for the treasury where the cathedral's most valuable artifacts get on screen, items that include silverware made up of reliquaries and also chalices, delicately embroidered vestments, statuary, as well as a variety of uncommon illustrated manuscripts. It's also worth remaining in the Gothic cloister, not so much for its collection of churches, consisting of one that maintains its 13th century wrought iron gate, but for the fact that on-site excavations have exposed the structures of Roman and also Moorish homes, the sanctuary was built over the damages of a mosque, and also the historical dig is a rewarding visitor tourist attraction in its own. Number 9. Elevador de Santa Justa. Impending rather incongruously over the rooftops of Lisbon's Baixa, Midtown, District is the odd-looking Santa Justa lift, a neo-Gothic lift as well as one of the most novel and eccentric methods of public transportation in the city. In the beginning glimpse, its riveted wrought iron framework as well as battleship grey paint conjure photos of the Eiffel Tower in Paris, and there is a connection, the French designer Raoul Mesnier du Ponsard, an apprentice of Gustave Eiffel, created the elevator, which was inaugurated in 1901. It was developed as a way of attaching the Baixa with the Largo do Carmo in the Bairro Alto neighborhood, a fashionable area of the city peppered with expensive shops, fadu houses, as well as little dining establishments. Today, it wonders vacationers rather than the traveling public that make the 32-meter jaunt to the top, taking a trip in wood-paneled cabins that still feature the initial refined brass instruments. The cabins creak their method to a system established just listed below the top balcony. From right here, guests can either leave and stroll across a bridge right into Biro Alto or decide to climb the spiral staircase that leads to the upper balcony. The sights from the top are fantastic and absorb an active urban canvas of pedestrianized roads, stunning squares, and also the universal castle and river Tagus. You can also enjoy a remarkable viewpoint of the neighboring Igreja do Carmo, expect big lines throughout the summertime period. One more one-of-a-kind kind of transport in Lisbon is the Elevador de Bica, a funicular railway that was created by Raul Mesnier de Ponsar and available to the general public in 1892. Today, it still rises above the steep Rua de Bica de Duarte Bello and whisks passengers approximately a panoramic viewpoint. The reduced station of this funicular railroad is almost hidden behind a facade on the Rua de S. Paulo with the inscription Ascensor de Bica. While here, it's worth exploring this tranquil little quarter recognized as Bica, which runs down from the Calçada do Combro slash Rua do Loreto to the Tagus. Just a couple of autos journey here as a result of its sloping topography, slim roads, as well as largely jam-packed buildings. Number 8. Museo Nacional do Azulejo. Found rather off the tourist route eastern of the town hall, the National Tile Museum is worth choosing for its one-of-a-kind collection of Azulejo's attractive tiles and the fabulously luxuriant Igreja Madre de Deus. Housed within the church as well as cloisters of the Convento de Madre de Deus, this is the only gallery in Portugal dedicated to this historic art type. The irreversible exhibit traces the development of tile-making from Moorish days with Spanish impact as well as the development of Portugal's very own style. Exhibited chronologically, several of the earliest examples date from the 15th century and also are displayed as total panels of elaborate patterns in brilliant shades. Portuguese ceramic tile job includes the extra acquainted blue and white azulejos, with one superior piece, a 36-meter tiled panorama of pre-earthquake Lisbon, among the highlights of the collection. 
Access to the museum includes accessibility to the 16th century Church of Madre de Deus. Right here, visitors are treated to one of one of the most attractive and also ebullient church interiors anywhere in Portugal, a delicious Baroque showcase of opulent woodwork, sparkling 17th century azulejos, and a sensational Rococo altarpiece. Number 7. Torre de Belém. Probably one of the most emblematic of all Lisbon's historic monoliths, the Belém Tower squats in the shallows near the mouth of the River Tagus as a sign of Portugal's extraordinary age of discovery throughout the 16th century. Integrated in 1515-21 as a citadel and also initially sited in the middle of the river, the watercourse has actually changed throughout the years, the tower represents the high point of ornamental manualine design. Its ornate appearance is decorated with extravagant maritime motifs all twisted rope as well as armillary balls took of stone. So beneficial and also iconic is this monument that it's safeguarded as a UNESCO World Heritage Site. Establish over different degrees, the most interesting interior function is the second floor king's chamber, where the area opens onto a Renaissance loggia. The royal coat of arms of Manuel I is placed above the classy galleries. Climb the impossibly high spiral stairs to the top floor tower terrace, as well as you're rewarded with a great scenic view of the beachfront esplanade as well as the river. Number 6. Museu do Oriente. West of the town hall, near Alcantara, as well as housing a remarkable collection of Asian art developed by the influential Fundação Oriente, this appealing social center chronicles Portugal's visibility in Asia and the Far East. The long-term exhibit is set over two degrees and also grouped around several core locations of Asian art, particularly Chinese. Displayed under suppressed lights, however with private pieces showcased under determined limelight, the collection takes you on an unbelievable journey that traces the cultural and also trade web links forged between Portugal and also India, Japan, Myanmar, Macau, as well as Timor. An enormous 17th-century teak door from India decorated with iron and bronze greets you on the first floor, as well as breaks the ice into a hall that impresses with artifacts such as the fragile Namban display depicting Portuguese seafarers disembarking from the Corifune to be satisfied by bemused Japanese locals. Macau, a previous Portuguese nest, is well represented by distinctive pieces like the put-on-hold boat-shaped cradle, circa 1877, made from sculpted, lacquered, and gold Asian wood, walking cane, and also iron. Somewhere else, a remarkable display of Chinese Ming and Qing dynasty terracotta porcelain figurines is placed near a set of restricting 17th-century samurai chainmail armor. Make a point of seeking out smaller sized items, products like the quirky collection of Chinese snuff boxes and the silver alloy bracelets from Timor. The second floor homes the substantial clock collection making up even more than 13,000 instances of numbers as well as mythical beings cut from cowhide and also parchment as well as used by puppeteers in darkness cinemas from Turkey to Thailand. The Orient Museum will soak up a pair of hours of your attention, however if you time a visit for mid-morning, you can pause for lunch in the fifth-flooring dining establishment as well as relive the experience. Number 5. Museu Nacional de Arte Antiga. The National Museum of Ancient Art is one of Lisbon's great cultural destinations, and a have to see on any kind of vacation or plan. This is Portugal's National Gallery and also houses the largest collection of Portuguese 15th and also 16th century paints in the country. An equally remarkable display of European, Oriental, as well as African art adds to the appeal. The gallery is set west of the city center within a 17th century royal residence, itself developed over the remains of the St. Albert Carmelite Abbey, which was essentially damaged in the 1755 quake. Thankfully, the chapel made it through and is incorporated right into the structure. Established over three levels, the considerable long-term collection calls for a good two hours of your time. 
Begin by discovering the aforementioned St. Albert Chapel on level 1 and afterwards twist via areas displaying Portuguese applied art, furniture, tapestries, and also textiles, among other things, numerous mirroring the impacts of Portugal's colonial expeditions. Look out for the beautiful 17th century coffin from India crafted in silver gilt. Level 1 houses some absolutely exceptional jobs. Remarkable pieces here include Hans Holbein the Elder's Virgin as well as Child with Saints, 1519, and also the beautiful 1521 picture of Saint Jerome by Albrecht Durer. The astonishing fantasy that is the temptations of Saint Anthony, circa 1500, by Hieronymus Bosch is an emphasize. Jewelry, porcelains, gold, cutlery, as well as art from the Portuguese discoveries all hold the look on level 2, yet resolve researching the remarkable 16th century Japanese Namban screens that highlight the Portuguese trading in Japan. Level 3 is devoted to Portuguese paint and sculpture. The Don't Miss Treasure is the altarpiece that depicts the panels of St. Vincent, repainted in 1470-80 by Nuno Gonçalves, the official musician for King Diafonso V. The yards behind the gallery are entitled to a reference. Fine views of the river can be delighted in from the terrace, and there's a coffee shop where you can relax as well as contemplate the visual banquet just experienced. Number 4. Musea Calust Gulbenkian. A sparkling treasure in Lisbon's cultural crown, the Musea Calust Gulbenkian is additionally among the most renowned museums in Europe. The facility, sited in a lavish, green park in the north of the city, is named after Kalust Sarkis Gulbenkian, an Armenian oil mogul born in 1869, who bestowed his huge exclusive art collection to Portugal shortly prior to his fatality in 1955. Adhering to the terms of this endowment a foundation was developed, the focal point of which is this purpose-built arts facility. Gulbenkian's amazing heap attributes valuable artwork from around the globe, which span 4,000 years, from old Egyptian times to the late 20th century. With so lots of items from so lots of various periods in history to take in, you can conveniently invest half a day browsing the exhibit galleries, however your persistence will certainly be rewarded with a mesmerizing trip through one of the finest collections of art on the continent. Superior highlights in the classical as well as oriental art galleries consist of 11 Roman medallions, component of a heap uncovered in Abu Khor, in Egypt struck to honor the Olympic Games kept in Macedonia in advertisement 242. The 17th century Persian and Turkish rugs on screen are several of the most effective protected worldwide and also clear proof of Gulbenkian's keen rate of interest in Islamic art. Relocate with to the European art as well as among the Rembrandts, Van Dyck's, as well as other masters is portrait of Ellen Formant by Rubens Gulbenkian's favored painting. Exceptionally, the unusual clocks as well as watches displayed in the French 18th century decorative arts hall are done in best working order, get here on the hour and hear them chime. While right here, cast your eyes over the elbow chair that when belonged to Marie Antoinette. Much more paint as well as sculpture from the 18th and also 19th centuries, where Turner's dazzling as well as significant the wreck of a transport ship holds the eye, can be admired as you relocate through the structure. One area is committed to Francesco Gardi and also his studies of Venice. Keep an eye out, too, for Houdin's elegant Diana, sculpted in 1780. The tour of the museum finishes with the superb collection of jewelry as well as glasswares crafted by French Art Nouveau jeweler, René Lely. None of the breast pins and lockets were ever made use of, with the exception of the startling as well as flamboyant dragonfly female bouquet accessory, put on when on stage by actress Sarah Bernhardt. Number 3. Oceanario de Lisboa. The Lisbon Oceanarium is just one of Europe's finest fish tanks, and also among the biggest in the globe. It's likewise arguably the most family-orientated of all the city's site visitor attractions. 
Developed by Peter Chermayev and developed for the Expo 98 World Exposition in a location currently called Parque das Nassois, the Oceanarium is housed to a mind-boggling selection of fish and also marine animals, including dozens of different types of birds. The inventive layout represents four different sea and also landscapes, successfully the environments of the Atlantic, Pacific, Indian, as well as Antarctic Oceans. These surround a massive main tank including fish of all sizes and shapes including graceful rays, spheric sunfish, and also streamlined sharks kids preferred citizens of the deep. The wraparound plexiglass allows a superb close-up sight of this wonderful undersea globe, yet you ought to additionally seek out less obvious, yet no much less phenomenal types housed in smaller sized aquaria, such as the exquisitely delicate sea dragon as well as the comic clownfish. The various ecological communities are a pleasure to discover. The Antarctic environment, as an example, showcases spirited penguins, while a pair of spirited sea otters swipes the show in the Pacific tank. The Oceanario de Lisboa proactively promotes conservation of the world's oceans, and besides its jealous online reputation as one of Portugal's most prominent tourist attractions, has actually garnered worldwide appreciation for its marine environmental understanding campaigns. But above all, it's seriously excellent fun. Number 2. Mostero dos Geronimos. A highlight of any Lisbon sightseeing excursion, the 16th-century Geronimos Monastery is one of the terrific spots of Portugal, a stunning monument of tremendous historic and also social significance deserving of its UNESCO World Heritage Site honor. Near the riverfront in Lisbon's attractive Belém area, the monastery, likewise referred to as the Hieronymity Convent, was commissioned by King Manuel I in 1501. Constructed to recognize Vasco da Gama's legendary 1498 voyage to India, Geronimos is as a lot an icon of the riches of the Age of Discovery as it is a residence of prayer, building was primarily funded by trade in the seasonings brought back by da Gama. Star features of the Mostero das Geronimos consist of the fantastically elaborate southern portal and the attractive and also serene Manueline cloister. Vasco da Gama's tomb exists simply inside the entry to Santa Maria Church. Number 1. Castelo de São Jorge. The most identified of Lisbon's significant destinations, St. George's Castle commands a wonderful placement near Alfama on the crown of a hill for getting the Portuguese funding. This is just one of Lisbon's most preferred tourist destinations. Its outstanding battlements, engaging gallery, as well as interesting historical site incorporate to make the castle a gratifying experience for the entire family members, and youngsters especially will enjoy clambering over the strong walls and also towers that encircle the grounds. There's been a garrison on this site given that the Iron Age, but it was a castle that the Moors prevented getting into Christian pressures prior to lastly being overwhelmed in 1147 by Afonso Henriques. The successful king built the Alasova Palace, residence to subsequent kings until a new imperial house was created near the river. Essentially, site visitors are happy sufficient to appreciate the amazing views from the monitoring terrace that pays for a continuous view of the city, the River Tagus, as well as the distant Atlantic Ocean. The National Museum of Ancient Art is one of Lisbon's terrific social tourist attractions, as well as a have to see on any kind of vacationer schedule. An equally impressive display screen of European, Oriental, and African art adds to the appeal. Begin by checking out the aforementioned street, Albert Chapel on level 1 and then meander through areas displaying Portuguese applied art, furnishings, tapestries, as well as fabrics, among other items, several showing the impacts of Portugal's colonial explorations. The center, sited in a lush, verdant park in the north of the city, is called after Kalust Sarkis Gulbenkian, an Armenian oil magnate birthed in 1869, who bequeathed his large personal art collection to Portugal quickly prior to his death in 1955. Adhering to the terms of this endowment a structure was produced, the focal point of which is this purpose-built arts facility.